Hi, this is Renee Benson with NEC Display Solutions, and you are watching and listening to The AV Life. Hi, I'm Murphy Daly. I'm a veteran project manager with AV Projects, and you're listening to The AV Life. Hi, this is Kim Frank. I am AV Adjacent. You are watching and listening to The AV Life. I'm Corey Moss at CB Moss, the creator of this podcast, the one that you are listening to and watching on International Podcast Day. There you go. And I'm Tim Van Wert, your uh, host with the most, and you are watching and listening to The AV Life. Did I go a little too far with host with the most? <laughs> no, uh, I don't know, perfect, maybe. Tim. That was great. <laughs> Not that I wanted to give myself a, like an ego boost or anything like that, you know, so. Oh, yeah, it's, it's great. You are, <laughs> the most, are the most. And yes, it is International Podcast Day, day or night at this point uh, here on the East Coast. Um, and I know our, our cross-country uh, folks who have joined us here um, as well. Uh, so we are... Uh, We've, uh, it's going to be a, a fun, uh, a fun night tonight. Uh, we got a bunch of different uh, things to cover, uh, some new uh, sections to go with, and uh, let's first uh, go ahead and we're going to introduce our guests for this evening, and then we will get into um, just a little like check in with everybody, and we'll keep going for tonight. Uh, first off, I'm going to introduce uh, one of our, our younger guests uh, tonight uh, from the University of Southern California. Uh, Lex Peters, how are you doing tonight, Lexi? I'm so good. Thanks for having me. No problem. We are so glad you could join us. And uh, you, uh, you got a, a special uh, designation from, uh, or I should say, a uh, what is it, a co a commendation? Uh, most recently, you've been named to one of our uh, prestigious lists out there. You want to tell everyone about it? Yeah, I'm on the nine. Very exciting. So it's been yeah, a good time so far. Congratulations on that. So. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. And uh, you want to tell, uh, tell the, uh, the, the podcast world out there what you uh, do over at USC? Um, so I work in the ITS Learning Environments Department, and I primarily deal with um, customer experience, lots of branding, PR, marketing, and just generally making everyone's experience better from within the office all the way down to um, individual tickets and service opportunities. Oh, so it sounds like you basically make Joe Way look good. So, yes, that's my that's, sole that's responsibility. I... <laughs> he looks fantastic. <laughs> good job, Lexi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go over uh, next to uh, Jimmy Singleton, also from the University of Southern California. How you doing tonight, Jimmy? so good as well thank you tim good jimmy and you're one of the 40 under 40 as well i am i am i made it on the 40 under 40 this year and it's very exciting and it's very fun and uh, i'm very humbled and honored by it so thank you all and what and what I, I know you've been on with us before but uh, for those who may have missed uh, what do you uh, what do you do under uh, mr joe way over at usc yeah. So I'm, the, I'm a senior support analyst uh, in the learning environments department, and I oversee the team that does customer experience. Um, so Lex also makes me look good. And then when I look good, uh, Joe thinks that we're, we're all doing good. So everything's great. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Jimmy. And I, I'll, uh, my mind will just stick with the USC tree here. Hey, Joe Way, how are you doing tonight? Oh, darn near perfect. How are you doing, Tim? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> And Joe Way also, you know, does other things other than USC. I'm going to give you your moment for your plug. So go ahead. All right. Let me plug away. I do uh, host and edit the Higher Ed AV podcast, which, by the way, we'll have some other news coming on that. That also includes Jimmy and Lex uh, with that. Yep. Yep. Um, and as well, of course, you got to buy my book, Producing Worship, if you're into the, the House of Worship side. And of course, it, for all higher ed people, join HEPMA, the Higher Education Technology Managers Alliance. And uh, by the way, I will say, don't, uh, you, you know, don't let Lex and Jimmy sell themselves short. Obviously, uh, I say that I have the best staff in all of higher education. And when one of them is one of the nine and one is a 40 under 40, I'm off to a pretty damn good start. That's impressive. Well, then, as far as the leader the is concerned, that I think, uh, Joe Way, you're doing pretty good then. That definitely reflects what you're doing over there. So, and uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Dan Goldstein from Avixa. How are you, Dan? 
I'm uh, I'm extremely well, Tim. Yeah, well, you would tell uh, tell the uh, podcast world about yourself as well, please. Indeed, yeah. So, uh, so I'm Dan Goldstein. Um, first time on this podcast. I'm the uh, chief marketing officer of uh, of Avixa. Um, been uh, in the role for uh, well, been with the association for been in the role for a couple of years. Been in this uh, the association for about six years. Um, and have been uh, in the AV industry, or at least uh, uh, AV adjacent, as, as uh, Kim, I think you just said, uh, for pretty much my entire career, which um, goes back a long way, long enough, I think, for me to be called, uh, referred to as, uh, uh, not that I like this phrase, but uh, referred to as an industry veteran. So uh, never, never thought the day would come, but I think it's, if it's not here already, it's, uh, it's pretty imminent. Well, it's, uh, we're glad to have you and your, your veteran leadership uh, with us as well, uh, Dan. So there, there is something to, the, to having that, uh, that experience there. So uh, thank you for, for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the mic, as it were, virtually, uh, over to uh, Corey. Uh, we, uh, he, we've got a little, a little some news to pass along from our end here, and then we'll, uh, we'll keep moving. Go ahead, Corey. All right, Tim. Thank you very much. First thing I want to do is shout out to Mara Quinn. Mara has had to leave the show. I just want to say she's done so much for us. Uh, Mara, we love you, right? So I want you to know that. As for myself, I'll be leaving the show as a co-host crew member tonight. This will be my last appearance on the show. Uh, so I just wanted to say that. And today is International Podcast Day again. Best day to listen to your, any of your favorite podcasts, and hopefully AV Live is one of them. Right, back to you, Tim. All right. Well, thank you, Corey. And thank you definitely to, to Mara. And thank you to you as well, Corey. Um, the last few weeks have been uh, very special having you back on the show and giving a, a, a little bit of normality that all of us were really missing in these, these last uh, few months. Um, so, and, and Amara, you know, that, that energy of hers is, is greatly going to be missed here on the show. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll just have to try, try to keep that level of energy up as well. Um, and She'll also, come back to visit us. She'll yeah, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure we'll, she will not yeah. be gone for long. So, in the, the uh, and as I told her, the door, the virtual door is always open. So she is more than welcome to hop in and uh, grace us with her oh, presence. <laughs> Sorry, Murphy? It's an advantage of virtual doors. Yes, that, yes, they, they, they can all. Easy. Yes, they, they definitely do. Yes. Um, and uh, actually, since Murphy, since you chimed in, um, we're going to open up a, uh, we're going to start a new section here on the AV Life. Um, we kind of hinted at it in the last episode. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, go back and listen to the previous episode. Um, great conversation with some leaders uh, from some women leaders uh, within our, our industry and uh, talking about the, the gurus and mentors that brought us along um, and uh, in an effort to try to help guide people, people that may be interested in project management, things like that, um, we've decided to start a very small segment called uh, the PM Minute or the Project Management Minute. Uh, Minute. The PM minute, yes, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to, to Murphy for uh, for this week's uh, PM minute. So Murphy, take it away. All right. So the PM minute. I need to tell you something. You probably already know. I'm going to admit to it. I've been a project manager for a long time, and the truth is, everyone hates project managers. They hate them because project managers are the Jiminy Cricket of the AV world. The other one's coming along saying, you have to do this, you have to do this. One of my first, um, first and still favorite engineers made a joke of running away whenever I went to go see him. <laughs> He's like, oh no, you're gonna give me something to do. You're gonna check on my action item. And this is the truth. Project managers come along and people hate them. All the team hates them until they realize, oh crap, if I don't have this person to keep me on track, things go much worse. So that's the truth. You will be yeah. hated before you are loved and you will be hated again if you are a project manager. I'm pretty sold on the career of project manager now. 
<laughs> I think I'm ready. If you want to be the one that jabs people with the stick and say, hey, come on, do this, you know, or pokes you with a finger and yeah, maybe jabbing with a stick is too by nice. Date. Need by date. Yeah. Yes. So, well, thank you. That's that was the a moment of the day. And Truth there's your you carry with you. And there's your PM minute. Thank you very much, Murphy. Happy to help. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we've, we've helped and some people just needed to hear it. And I think some of the things that we need to hear most are the things that may be just right there in front of us. So that's, thank you very much for that. Um, so, okay. So we talked about our gurus and our mentors in our last episode. So this week, what we'd like to do is we'd like to talk about leadership. You know, the, the people that we may pick as our gurus and our mentors typically are stronger leaders as well. So um, we, we invited some of our leaders out here and we all, everybody that's on this show actually is a leader in some respect. Um, you know, we have, we have Kim who is a president and she, you know, she's got her leadership role. Joey has his leadership roles. Renee does as well. And, um, and, and Dan Goldstein as well. Uh, Dan, um, could you, uh, let, since let's, let's start the conversation off about leadership with you. If you mm -hmm. uh, could uh, give us a little bit of uh, insight as to your view of leadership. Sure. Sure. Ha happy to, happy to. Um, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, when, when I um, found out that was going to be the topic of the show, I, I, my mind went back to uh, the, the email exchange that I had with Dave Lebuskis, our, our, the Avixa CEO, is my boss um when uh when uh i applied for an open position at, at the association and um and it was basically to head up the marketing uh, department and uh, a, a global marketing department and uh i was based in in europe at the time um heading up the marcoms for the uh, ISE show which which picks up co-owns and um dave and i knew each other not well um but he sent me this, he was very interested in, in the fact that I was interested in working for the association. Um, and, but he wanted to make something very, very clear to me. He wanted to make it clear that um, I could not do this job that he advertised <clears throat> from, um, from a spare room in London or Munich or Amsterdam or anywhere else that I might have been working at the time. Um, and the reason he gave was that he said that the marketing function within this in the association uh, uh, was in need of what he called transformational leadership um, and and it was his way of saying if you if you want to do this job you've you've got to up sticks and and move to northern virginia which is where we're headquartered and that's not that's not a small move <laughs> mm -hmm. um uh but i you know it was the, it turned out to be the right move for me and i and i hope dave agrees it was the right move for the for the association um but it was a, it, I was just really, really struck at the time by that phrase because I spent a lot of my career um, uh, building teams and, and growing teams and, and mentoring people and um, have always really been a kind of a team person, you know, never really been a, 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 someone who, who plays like individual sports like golf or tennis or anything like that. You know, I play soccer, I play cricket, I play, you know, that's, that's where I get my my motivation is from, I don't like going to the gym and, and improving myself. You know, I, I like, I could never, never run marathons or triathlons or anything like that. I like, I like being part of a team and, and enabling and, and facilitating. Um, and I, I, I have to say since, since joining, uh, joining the association six years ago, I've been, I've learned a lot. I, I thought I was, I thought I was a great leader when I, <laughs> when I started and I've learned so much. And I think one of the things I've really learned is, is the difference between leadership and management. Um, and, uh, you know, managers, managers are there to, to, um, control things. They, and then, and they're necessary, you know, we, we, we need managers. Um, but they're, they're, they're essentially there to maintain stability and, and, and control processes and, and make sure that, that things happen. But when any organization needs, uh, to need some kind of transformation, needs some kind of change or, or needs to, needs to negotiate change in some way, um, uh, you need leaders because leaders, the difference between managers and leaders is that is that leaders um, don't don't look at the status quo and assume that everything's fine. Um, they they are much easier to 
uh, embrace change and adapt to change. And in the industry that we're in, which is a very, very fast moving industry and um, constantly amazes me um, with its agility and its and its and its its own ability to to respond to change um and and uh, ex ex exploit new opportunities um i think i think that ability to uh to embrace change and and develop a vision and and enable the people who are around you and and working for you is is just a critical absolutely critical skill set so so I love, uh, I'm still learning. I, I don't think you ever stop learning as a leader, actually. Um, I think, I think that's, that's one of the things that, again, that kind of defines, defines leadership. Um, but I've, I've been very, very privileged to, uh, to work under, under Dave. If you're listening, Dave, um, <laughs> uh, he's taught me a lot. And I think the other thing I would mention, just specifically about Avixa, is the other thing that's been a great privilege is to work with our volunteer leadership. Um, uh, we are uh, we are a non-profit association. We do depend quite heavily on our on our volunteers for for guidance and and I've been particularly privileged to have worked with um, probably thirty or forty different leaders um, from our industry who have served on our board um, over the last uh, five or six years, and they've come from all walks of AV life. Um, they, uh, they've come from manufacturers, they've come from distributors, they've, they've come from integration firms, they, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're in-house uh, in -house tech providers, uh, consultants, um, live events people, pretty much the whole, you know, the whole uh, cross-section of, of the industry. Um, and some people who were really, you know, again, just, just really adjacent, you know, from interior design and, and, and places like that. So, um, but what distinguishes all of them is that they are that they don't necessarily have an awful lot in common because because they come from so many different um, uh, places in in the business they uh, they don't necessarily have a lot in common. What they so you get that great breadth of perspective from them. Um, but then what they what they do have in common is that they're all leaders. They understand that that their role is to is to guide the association and and offer um, offer their perspective. Um, not to control it or manage it or, or try to run it, and I think that's um, we've been we've been so um, so fortunate to have been able to attract a very high a caliber of leader into our uh, onto our board and into our volunteer structure generally, um, and I I very much hope that um, that we continue to do so because it's just been so so critical to our success. Dan. Did you in fact move to Virginia to the headquarters? I did. Yes, I've been been here for six years. Um, no, no regrets whatsoever. Um, it's uh, it's very different. I'm I'm still getting my head around things that don't quite work the way that they that I'm used to them working, and and still still learning the language, um, which you know flummoxes me from time to time. And there there are things that I say that just don't resonate with anybody. But, but apparently, I no longer say Bob's your uncle. Um, oh. I, said, I said that in a couple of presentations early on, and got these really really odd looks from people. You know, um, Uncle Bob thinks that that's a fine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bob's always do, don't they? Um, uh, apparently, I no longer say pardon when when I can't when I've, I've I haven't heard something properly. I used to say pardon, and I've and I've stopped. I've stopped doing that. So, so there are, I mean, I've still got the accent, obviously. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm too much of an industry veteran to lose that probably at this stage, but, um, but yeah, there are certain, and I think I do still say a lot of things that, that, that people here just don't say at all, but I, I, I rarely struggle to make myself understood. I think I'm, people, have, uh, my, my coworkers have been great at kind of humoring me and, and, and they've, They've been really, um, again, really agile in the way that they've 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 been able to interpret my my um, British nonsense from time to time. It's not always nonsense, but you know, it is a different language for sure. I think that's what Bill Bryson said that America and Britain are separated by a common language. 
Yes, yes, separated by common language. Absolutely, it's and it's a it's amazing. I mean, I, I have a um, I have an American um, fiance, and and we we marvel at the fact that we're able to communicate at all. Sometimes it's just it's miraculous. Um, but somehow yeah, but, we do, we do get on. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't it in My Fair Lady too, where uh, Rex Harrison's character like chimes in with, uh, you know, the Americans haven't spoken English for years. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm not sure the English speaking is anymore either. Though. That's the odd, that's the odd thing. I go back now. Well, not recently, obviously, with what's been going on in the world. But I go back now, and and I find that there are new there are new things that people are saying, new phrases have crept into the vernacular that I just don't. Partly because I'm old, and then partly because it's just it's I don't I don't know what that I, I haven't been here. I, I've got no. You know, I've always been, a, I was an English student and I've, I've always been a, a kind of a, a communicator or a marketer or a writer or a journalist, but I've always been in that kind of line of work. And um, uh, it's really disorientating to, to find that people are, are saying things that I don't, I have a vague idea of what they mean, but because I've got no context as to how these phrases have, have, have come, have crept into the language, they, yeah, they really do. It's really unsettling, actually. I've, I've got, I've got three uh, grown up kids back in the UK and they they say things that I just I sometimes I just don't understand or, or maybe they're just insulting me and I'm I'm just turning <laughs> to it and pretending it's not happening that that's okay the case yeah I have a five and a half year old and he says things that I don't understand so he, it's right. he's he, it's the same thing here like they'll he'll, he'll just come out and start making noises and saying things and I'm like what are you talking about and he's like oh I heard it in this video and that video or like you know yeah. so and so for my class and I'm like Wow, I'm like, and that's at five and a half. <laughs> well, I mean, and I think that. I mean, well, I, I think it'd be great to hear from from uh, from from the younger folks on on this podcast. But I I, I actually think going back to the subject of leadership, that 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 speaks to an interesting point, which is that there is a there is a, a there is a gap, right? There are there are generation gaps all the time, and and we talk about you know boomers versus millennials versus you know Gen X and Gen Z and so on and so forth. And I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of those generalizations, but I will say that when we look at the future of the AV industry and we look at the future, you know, what the future leadership looks like, I think one of the things that 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 um, people of my generation sometimes struggle with is is they think that future leaders are are people um, they're looking for the same skill set that that they had. Um, I used to work with a, in, in magazine publishing and I had a, a, a friend of mine who was a magazine editor who had an open position and he, he, he told me, he said, I said, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for someone who reminds me of me. And I just thought, why? Why would you hire another one of you? Mm -hmm. You want somebody... We have you. Right, exactly. Right. That's, just, that's just duplicative and it's going to be weird. So uh, no, we don't, we don't need another one of you. Um, and I, 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 but I think one of the things that we... One of the huge opportunities that I see, and this is something that's come up at, 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 on our board actually, is there's a whole um, there are whole waves of kind of untapped talent coming into our industry, um, and the challenge that we face is they don't look like they don't look like us, um, and they they've got we're looking for you know traditional AV skill sets, and 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 the people that that could could come into our industry just have they they, they just they, they they talk a different language they well, I, i'm listening to this and i'm thinking you're looking for traditional av what are we looking for uh, right right bell but, cowbells and sticks what's happening no we more, don't want that cowbell. we look forward yes yes you know, um hey tim really quickly yes, can, we just, can we change the format of the show and just listen to dan give advice for the next hour I, <laughs> that, I, right? he was going he's on a roll uh, dan has been all very valuable yeah i'm, I'm all in on that <laughs> but you know i think you make a good point because i think as um a uh, i'm i'm on the older side of the leaders ar around our industry now as well um uh, i am an elder uh, but uh, you know, I think the key is is our industry is changing, and no matter how much I want to say I have um, a a key, you know, a, I'm tapped into that direction. There's only so far I can take it, and that's why taking our youth and saying here invest in them because they're the ones who are going to drive it into the future. They're the ones who are tapped into the new technologies and the new. Um, and the new way people take in AV and take in media, 
Um, and so I think as a leader for me, and I hope I do for them, is that is just to open the door, right? Make sure that they, uh, you know, drive a vision and open the door and then give them all the resources they need to be successful and keep taking it forward. You know, and here's an example of that. Um, Dan, meet Lexi. Lexi, meet Dan. So Lexi is the best marketing PR person ever. And she has saved my, well, she starts a student worker, saved my department, brought her in and fantastic. And then Lexi, Dan is the chief marketing officer at Avixa. So one of our top. So you guys need to mix contacts and stay in, and stay in touch for the future. So that's really my role, right? Is make those connections uh, for our, our people so they can continue to grow and then unseat me and let, you know, get me away from the microphone and they have to start having it. We were, that's, that's brilliantly said, Joe. I and mean, we were joking before we, before we went on air about, um, about me not being on Twitter, right? And, and it was like, oh, Dan, you know, you're a CMO. You have, you have whole armies of people who can do Twitter for you. And, and yes, that is partly true. But the other, one of the other reasons I'm not on Twitter is I think I'd be terrible. I'd be terrible on Twitter. I haven't grown up with Twitter. I haven't grown up with social media at all. I'm a long form, as you're all discovering, long form <laughs> uh, extemporizer who loves language and words and whatever. You can't, you can't put me in front of a, of a mobile device and expect me to be succinct in, in a, you know, 260 characters or whatever it is. It's just never going to, it's never going to happen. And I look at people around me who who have that skill set and i marvel at it and i think it's absolutely wonderful um uh, if you've got if you've got people in your in your organization who are really excelling at something um just let them get on with it and do it and just like you say joe provide the vision um and the encouragement and the inspiration um and and tell people when they're when they're doing a great job and also don't be afraid to say that that you think something's not right um, but don't, you know, don't, don't try and control them. I would never try and control what, what any of my people are, 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 are saying on, on Twitter. I mean, that's just, that's just not my job at all. They've, they've got this, they understand the medium, they understand the, the communication style, um, and they can, and they can, um, use that knowledge in, in ways that quite frankly, I, I can't even, I can't even dream of. You know, listening to this conversation about leadership and Dan, you're talking about your position of leadership and how you want to make sure to hand off to more people. You're doing the same, Joe. Um, I am reminded of a book I read called, uh, I read it last year and then I read it again this year called The Art of Possibility, because certainly right now I'd like to think about how to create possibility in this COVID shrunk down world mm -hmm. that I'm uncomfortable in. Um, it is a beautiful book by, Benjamin Zander and his wife, Rosamond Stone Zander. And he's, um, I think she's a psychologist and he's an um, orchestra leader. So it's kind of A, the A of E, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a part where they talked about leading from the fifth chair, the fifth chair in the instruments of the orchestras. That is not a leadership position, right? Mm -hmm. the, leader the leader is the soloist, the leader is the conductor, oh my gosh, but being the fifth violin, uh-uh. However, it's a gorgeous book. I recommend that you all read it. It's endlessly wonderful. And he says, he encouraged his, the people in his orchestra, be the leader from the fifth chair, be all that you can add to this experience from where you are, even if it feels like nothing. And then you will ex impact the experience and you'll end up leading that way. So even if, and I've, <laughs> I've longed to be a leader in my younger days, you know, earlier on in my career, like I want to do more and I can't until I know what I'm doing yet, you know, but I, if I can take what I know and do as much as I can with it, it's like what he's describing, be as much as you can fill, do your role as, as large and as best quality as you can. And then you do end up leading and it, it goes forward from there. But you never know who the sixth or seventh or 27th chair that might be watching you. So in turn, you might become a leader and you didn't expect to. But I wanted to say, you know, I was going to Infocom years before it was, you know, Avixa back in the Infocom days. But I, re I mean, I don't really remember, and maybe it was just because I wasn't as involved, but 
IVIX has really stepped up with the leadership councils, the women's councils, the diversity councils. Yeah. That it's, it's almost like, I, I don't remember that being there. I was just the mouse who walked around the trade show floor. And now it's like, what can I get involved with? Who, who can I go? When do I, who do I have time to go watch speak? And so thank you to Avixa for opening my eyes to that. I don't know if it was other folks that saw it like that as well. So that's really changed how much I've put myself out there in our industry in the last probably six, seven, you know, seven years or so. So that's, that's a good, great, huge great thing that doing that. Yeah, it's great to hear, Renee. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a very intentional um, uh, path for us. We, we had had councils um, for, for many, many years as part of our volunteer leadership, but they historically had always been um, structured around industry role. So you had, a, you had a tech manager's council, you had an integrator's council, you had a consultant's council and so forth. Um, <clears throat> we'd, never, we'd never had any, anything in our volunteer um, structure that was about who people are rather than what they do. And, and that, uh, I think the Women's Council was the first uh, of those, uh, and then Young AV, and then Diversity, um, and, and who knows, you know, maybe there'll be more. Um, and the really great thing about, about these is, um, it's kind of what I was saying about the board, you, you, it, it's great to get a load of uh, integrators together, it's great to get a load of consultants together, but but what you can learn from each other when you when you're sitting around a table or or, um, or in a uh, on a Zoom call, um, and what you have in common is not what you do for a living, not what you do. You, you there's the industry is a common thread that runs through everything, of course. But um, you, what you have in common is is who you are, and and or, or some part of your um, you know personal um, personal identity, and and I think that's. Um, it leads to a completely different uh, kind of engagement um, and, and has already produced that. The, the great thing about that structure is that, again, it, it acts as a feeder up into our um, leadership search committees and, and, um, and, and ultimately the board of directors. And so we've, you know, we've got a, uh, a you know, a, a, a very, a pretty, um, I would say a thorough commitment to to having you know diversity at at, at board level and um, and you can't you, you, that can't be a top down effort it has to come um, from from the industry um, and and um, uh, so uh, yeah it's great to it's great to hear like at first hand that 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 kind of engagement is is resonating um, because um, we've put a lot of effort into it and we want to continue to to do so. Yeah, I think when I first went to my first uh, Infocom Women's Breakfast, there were like 40 mm, gals right. in, in the room. And we met once a year at Infocom. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I just was on a happy hour tonight with, with the with Women's um, VIXA Council. And there's people from Canada, from New Zealand, I think was on the call. It was just all over and we meet all the time. And it's it's helping push me to be a better leader for the Kansas City air chapter or area, and so I very much appreciate that. And, and to see the growth, I'll put veteran behind my name without sounding without aging myself too much. Um, but it's interesting, and like I said, the more we can do to, whether it be the fifth chair or first chair, that it we can guide or teach anybody else to try to want just a little bit better for themselves. And I think then we all become leaders. So. Yeah. And Renee, you had actually talked about that a little bit last week as like being like kind of that mentor the, to the ones that are, I don't want to say below you, but that you're working with now. I mean, yeah, I, because now I'm the, I'm the older lady in the group and, um, you know, you're experienced. That's what you're experienced. Experience, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, that was done for me. And so I remember what that did for me. And so it, it Kind of like it's my pleasure to do that. I don't know how good I am, um, but I do have a big shoulder to listen to things and never mind offering advice. But I think always wanting to be a better leader um, is kind of what keeps me going. And like I said, getting on these um, women's council meetings and to see what they're doing in their area. And it's like, okay, shoot, I need, really need to get the creative juices flowing because I need to do something like that or better than that. So it's just, 
I just think you know, just anything you can to always have something positive to push you to do one step better, no matter what it is in life, whether it's father, husband, mother, wife, whatever, anything that can take you to one level above, I think is nothing but positive. <clears throat> There's something weird that happens like on your career path towards leadership. Um, and I'm sure this is the same in AV and probably, you know, umpteen million different kinds of careers. It's like you kind of start as a practitioner and you get really good at being a practitioner and then you start to go up and you stop being what you were good at, but you were promoted because you were a good practitioner and, and then you stop being that thing and you have to become something else. And it's such a challenge. Um, you know, I, I was, I've been a research person, a numbers person my whole career. And I was, you know, deriving insights from data sources. And now I'm like, my numbers are budgets and p and and personnel and comp and HR and it, it's health insurance. And it's just kind of this strange career trajectory. And you just have to be nimble the whole time, right? You just have to say, there's an element of fearlessness. Like I own an old, old house. My house is 125 years old. And I've learned that like outside of electrical and plumbing, you can learn to do pretty much anything on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I, I think the same holds true for like most of your career is like if, if you're a smart person who's driven and not afraid to say, I don't know how to do it, but I'll figure it out mm -hmm. in two days. That's the stuff that I'm looking for on my staff. It's not like I'm an expert in everything, but I will, I don't know today, but I will figure it out tomorrow because those I think are the leaders because you don't get to be a practitioner at the sea level. That's just not how life goes. Like in most companies, you get to the sea level and you're signing off on payroll and there's a certain amount of agility and nimbleness that's required to get there, but then every now and then you get thrown a, oh, we're short staffed and we need somebody to do some research. And you're like, oh, yay, I <laughs> to do what I wanted to do with my career. It's so exciting. Yeah, well, yeah I, completely, I completely agree with you there, uh, uh, Kim. You know, I, I'm in that I'm in that transition stage, as I said last week. Um, you know, I'm kind of in that working more towards being supervisory, but now I'm, but I'm still doing the engineer stuff. So whenever I get a chance to be in the field and like, you know, run some cable through the ceiling. I got my, I get excited. I'm ready to go. Is like, let me, yeah. And like that was today. That was, uh, I was up in the ceiling. We were pulling new network cable for our uh, shore uh, X, uh, M, uh, MX 710s. <laughs> and uh, just to put a little product drop out there. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, um, but yeah. yeah, it was, it made for a good day. Sorry, Joe. I said it's a fantastic. It, yes, they are. They are fantastic microphones. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, this is kind of an interesting point, right? Like the the thing that people ask for all the time is I want someone who's a jack of all trades. I want someone who can do a lot of things and stuff like that. And the whole phrase, you know, jack of all trades, we can talk about this over and over again. But the rest of the phrase is master of none. You're a jack of all trades, but you're a master of none. Um, so I think that's really important, you know, is that you take the chance to say yes to something, um, even if you don't know what you're doing and then figure it out as you go. Um, I'm, I'm like number one proprietor for YouTube University. If I don't know how to do something, I look it up on YouTube and then within a day I'll have it figured out. Um, and I think that's what makes a jack of all trades. You know, not, not that you're like, I'm amazing at everything because no one's amazing at everything. You're amazing at one thing and you can figure out other things. Not you, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm great at everything. You just everything. haven't recognized it yet. Yeah. I'll get there. I'm actually good at delegating. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am learning the power of plus plus and then add Jimmy or Lex on an email and say, it only, you take care of this? Little yeah, do they it only know. took Joe his entire career. Yeah. I started my, mm, most of my career as being like an engineer of, and helping operations for a large companies and I you know what you were who is it Tim you were saying oh running some cable I'm like oh just getting my elbows deep into the into the rack all that mm -hmm. I'm like oh so comforting oh so comforting and um but then I find myself as a project manager on a crew and I've got the people on the ladder I've got the the 
cable guys. I've got the people, you know, pulling, unboxing, hanging, all these things. And they, and it was I'm like, oh, all this isn't working. Why don't I have control over this? Because I didn't think about what it felt like to be in the role that I'm in now when I was aspiring to it. I didn't think about what it felt like. And then I get into this role. I'm like, oh, I do, I do not feel as though I'm in power. I do not feel as I'm a leader. I just am like trying to keep all this together, right? But I look around and I think, that guy thinks I'm the one. <laughs> he thinks I'm the one that has the answers and I'm supposed to know the answers and I don't feel like I do, but I've got to make a decision today because we got a schedule. And so, looking, go ahead, Murphy. Looking at him, I got to go, hey, is this, is this, what do you want to be doing? Tell me more about what you think you'd like. Cause there's a lot of downtime on the, on the site. You are sitting there. I don't actually go to sites very often anymore. It's all remote. Yay. But um, like, Hey, what are you looking for? You know, what do you want? And, and they will say, I want to be a project manager. I'm like, okay, you could do that. Let me tell you how you might, you'd be good at it. Keep trying, keep going. And that's like trying to encourage the people around us. People did for me too, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, that's, I mean, that's actually, it's a good kind of like a segue we can move into. So, so Lex, as a, as a young leader now, what do you, or do you, do you consider yourself a leader in what you're doing now? And where do you see yourself going at this point? Oh, good question. Um, I would say I'm a leader in some aspects and in other aspects, very much a follower. Um, I definitely have the expertise in our department when it comes to branding, PR, marketing, anything of that sense. So I, in that way, um, even recently, I just had like a yearly evaluation and just like the importance of communicating that and communicating something that comes so easily to me. And it seems like, oh, like common sense, or I degrade it because I think like, because it's so easy to me, or it totally makes sense to me that like, nobody's going to value it if that makes sense but then really just owning up to the fact that you know I've worked years to get what is that um I worked 30 years to be experienced enough to do this in 10 seconds there's something I don't know I didn't work 30 years obviously but <laughs> um just like the work I did to get here and to be able to do what I can do and so I've been learning a lot recently and just like owning owning up in that sense and being able to lead where I know how. Um, but then also, you know, taking a step back and really um, taking the opportunity to learn where I can. I think um, Murphy mentioned, um, you know, at the beginning of your career, you're so excited and you want to be in leadership and you want to do more and everything. But sometimes you just have to sit back and listen because it's just not my time yet. My time will come, but I have lots to learn and I know I do. And, um, and I think somebody mentioned mentors at some point um, that also has been super integral in, you know, my growth, even in my first, this is my first year as a big kid job officially come the October one year anniversary. So it's been, Ooh. thank you. <laughs> so it's been amazing, but you know, it's been a transition and just, being able to have mentors and bosses I look up to who encourage me to try and mess up and be the jack of all trades, but suck at a lot of things and just <laughs> kind of be average for a little bit until I get it right. Um, even Joe, like I do projects for him and then we'll just keep redoing it for weeks at a time until I get it right. And so um, that's been really cool. Just to have like the patience around me as far as, my future is that, are you talking like future and leadership or? Yeah, future and leadership. Like where, where do you see yourself going in that? Yeah, he's never realm? leaving me. So it's gotta be. <laughs> never. <leaving. laughs> um, to be completely honest, I dream of owning my own um, consulting company one day. So I would like to be the leader <laughs> right. um, in charge and have a team that really is just full of creative and exciting people who think out of the box um the so idea Kim, there is hmm? Kim has her own company she could give you tips <laughs> oh cool good to know yeah I just started it like actually this month so I'm working on it but like ideally one day you know I want to get there and it's, it seems really exciting but also very daunting um been getting a lot of advice from Joe as well um so if you 
Kim, I'm all for anything you have to throw at me because <laughs> it's a lot. But um, but yeah, that's kind of what I want to do in the future. But I know I have so much to learn already, especially here at USC. It's been a wonderful opportunity just to have at it and really get to explore my interests and where I can help out the team. That's great. I'm sure I, I think uh, in the last year being – Named one of the nine. I think that's a good start. <laughs> I think that's an excellent so. start. So you're, you're definitely doing something right out there, Alex. So uh, definitely. Hey, Jimmy, uh, what about what about you? What do you where do you see yourself now? And where do you see yourself leadership wise in the future? Yeah, so right now I, I am lucky enough that I do get to manage people and I get to lead people. I have a small team, um, so it's not it's not huge, but it's a good um, trial run at this point to kind of get my feet wet in it. And then with COVID and with everything else um, over this last year has been probably the most challenging year of my career. Um, a lot of things have happened, um, but I've learned more in this year and I feel like I've gained six years of experience in one year. Um, so that's really cool. And like Lex said, it's really about having someone who's willing to take the time with you. Um, you know, I believe in like the, you know, choose a mentor, even if they don't say they're your mentor, you know, just follow what they do. Um, you don't have to have that formal conversation with them. Um, luckily, I do have mentors that I've had that conversation with, but there's plenty of people in the industry that I'm just like, I like what they do. I'm going to stock what they do on social media. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to follow those in my own life or, you know, reading books and gaining all that knowledge and anything you can do to follow those steps. Um, and as far as the future, I don't know. I don't know where I see myself. I'm not a five-year plan kind of guy. Um, I don't really look that far ahead. I don't check my calendar until the night before. Um, so <laughs> I really, I just want to be, I want to be somewhere where I'm valued. I want to be somewhere where I'm happy. Um, I love leading a team. I love having a team that's wanting to, you know, make each other better and wanting to work together to achieve a goal. Um, but I don't know what that means for the future. I just know I like doing it. So hopefully I can do more of it. All right. Well, yeah. And again, also for you, you got a 40 under 40. So you're, uh, you also are definitely on, on, on a good path there. Jay. I got something right. I don't know yeah. what it is. I'm uh, not, I'm not a master of all, but I, I know a little bit about enough things. <laughs> Just enough to be dangerous as I always yeah. say. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, you know, why do I stalk? That's why I stalk Joe. Cause you know, Joe is really good at what he does and you know, I want to see myself, uh, you know, be a better, leader and a better higher ed vertical person you know that's kind of where you know and i i'm surrounded by great leaders and you know avix also has you know that <laughs> for us ever was that joe wonderful this is a great episode yeah, yeah the, everyone's just keep boasting keep joe you know what yeah. just keep coming <laughs> joe's um, a big words of affirmation guys guys yeah. so just <laughs> throw it at him he'll 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 chuck some kindness back at you well, I have to say, it's been, from my perspective, and being able to experience the leadership from many different verticals, and it's not just the higher ed vertical. I, you know, I did time in corporate. I, you know, I've done in other nonprofit. I've done, you know, I'm doing time. It sounds like I'm in jail, but you know, I've, I've done my time in in those other uh, verticals. Um, but I feel like I've grown the most in higher ed, um, and I not you know I, I like to i like to toot our horn when it comes to that is that you know we're we're a little bit of a special breed however you want to take that <laughs> here um but uh having that experience of all of them have i think that's made me a better leader if, if you get a chance to do a little bit of everything you know be that jack of all trades you know do do put your time in see see everything don't don't so try not to pigeonhole yourself, you know, too much, you know, I, I, there's nothing, also nothing wrong with knowing what you want to do right off the bat, but leaving yourself open to more experiences is definitely a good thing. I would say. Yeah. And um, I think, I think like saying yes to everything at the beginning, right. When you're, when you're young and when you're fresh to it, you say yes to everything, regardless if you know how to do it, whether it's below or above your experience level, whatever it is, you don't have the opportunity to say no until later on when you have the experience and you can say, I absolutely know I'm not good at that. So I'm not going to do that. Or I 
just I'm not interested in it, whatever it is. Um, but at the beginning, I feel like for me, I, I said yes to everything. I was like, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna try it. Um, and I think that's a large part of what makes people successful in the future, you know, is meeting other people and meeting those people that you want to look up to and that you see leadership in. Yeah, I think it's a great point, Jimmy. The, <clears throat> that openness to, to uh, doing different things and new things and not being fearful just because it's something you, you don't have experience of, that's how you figure out what you're good at and, and, and what you're less good at, right? And if you, if you just stick to the same thing, you, you might get really good at it, but you, 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 there could be all kinds of, uh, of potential that you're just leaving untapped because um, you, you, ha you don't have that breadth of, of experience. And, yeah. um, and, and I think, um, and the only other thing I would say is just not to, to put a kind of downer on it, there is a downside to leadership. I think, um, uh, I think Kim, it was you that was saying that, that about that, that transition from being a practitioner to, to a leader. Um, when I started in my, in my current role, I, uh, I told my team, Oh, you know, I love, I love writing. I still love writing. I've always, I've always written as in my, you know, ever since I started in my career. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to carry on writing. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not just going to be, um, you know, in, 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 in upper layers of, of management or leadership. Um, I tried to write one email, uh, the copy for literally one push marketing email send. And surprise, surprise, uh, Murphy, I had project managers knocking on my door saying, Dan, where's, where's the copy for this email? You know, and I, and I just became this huge roadblock I, because I just couldn't. I couldn't make that kind of... I could write. I could still write. I didn't, hadn't lost the ability to write. I hadn't lost the ability to, to be that practitioner but I, it was it was to do with headspace really i couldn't i couldn't make that that shift from trying to build a team and lead the team and motivate people and inspire them to to going going back into practice as it were and and I, and sometimes you when you are a leader you miss that you you miss the things that were foundational in in your career you know i miss i miss sitting behind the mixing console i miss um you know, <laughs> traditional crafts that don't even exist anymore, like, you know, tape, ta analog tape editing and that, that kind of thing. I miss all that stuff. Um, but you, you get to a point where you, you, that's not what you're hired to do anymore. You're, you're hired to lead. And, um, uh, you know, occasionally I think that's, um, brings a little, a little bit of, a little bit of sadness. So, but that, that's okay. It's funny you bring up the 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 analog tape editing, Dan. Uh, one of the things you know, I was actually just talking to my wife about it the other the other day. Um, I used to develop black and white photos for my school newspaper. Oh, like yes. spending time downstairs in the dark room, like I don't know, it, it, as sol as solitude as it was, it was probably one of the more fun things I used to do. Like you know, I got to crop everything on the negative and line up the fo the shot as I wanted to. And there there is an art form that is to that. And I don't want to get too far off topic, but I just thought it was interesting you brought that up. And I was like, I got to chime in with this part because it's just mm -hmm. timing wise worked out very nicely. So there, that that art form is still out there. And I think some of our our young leaders out there are gonna are gonna miss out on uh, that art as well. So. <laughs> Um, there's new there's new dark rooms there is a new version of it you know uh, isn't, isn't there yeah, i think you find i think you find different things right like you mm -hmm. you miss out on something so like one thing that dan said was sitting behind a mixing console i went to a recording school and i loved doing that and i did live sound for a long time this is the first job that i don't have to sit behind a mixing console um so i feel extremely weird doing that and i get to instead tell other people to go do something, you know, and I don't get to be as hands on anymore. Um, but then I find the little things I do like instead, you know, that are kind of taking mm -hmm. over that. Mm -hmm. All right. But you still gaff, gaff tapes. Like I still gaff, but I'm the only one that does it great. So that's, that's the one thing he, I am. He well, there's, there's your master of video of his, his art. <laughs> art of, well, he did. He trained Lex too. How, how did yeah, you, yeah. you train me? I'm your apprentice. My gaffing. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I'm still not the best. I'm still Jim, the best. Yeah, Jimmy's the master <laughs> gaffer. <laughs> gotta... But he really takes pride in his gaff taping. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying here. It's true. Do you do it by hand, uh, or do you have uh, the the little gaff? Not a. I'm not a gaff gun guy. I gaff. don't believe in the gaff gun. I think I could go faster than a gaff gun. 
Oh, that sounds like put a me, challenge. Put me in a challenge with a gaff gun and I'll win. I guarantee you mine's straighter and looks teeth? better. No, I just use the bare hands. Oh, yeah, that's that's a straight right in there, yeah. zip. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing stopping. Yeah, no scissors, no teeth. You just go right, yeah. You... Mm hmm so the, the angle and the speed joe, joe i think we need a video of jimmy versus somebody with a gaff yeah. gun and I, that needs to happen so That's quality content right there yeah mm -hmm. that'll be a, a it'd be bonus. great if there was some type of media group or something forming where that could be be there oh yeah that would be great that'd be great we content could do a gaff section yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> your your own column just on gaffing just gaff the gaff tip <laughs> youtube channel waiting oh. to be formed by the way speaking of gaff Go to Amazon.com. Don't do it. <laughs> and then just, just, just type in the word gaff. Don't put gaff tape. Just put gaff. Do I really no. want to do do I do we really want to do like this right now, Joe? <laughs> yes, you do. Processing? And um, spelling yeah. it G A F F. G A F F. Just, just gaff. G A F F. Yeah. And uh you oh. get yeah, you get a whole other mix of interesting uh, things. So well, at least a, Jim Gaffigan is like the third choice on here for me. So, Jim Gaffigan on Amazon? Yeah, his uh, the five. Pale Tourist. Oh, uh, it is, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. No, so, so there's a Thanks story. For this, so, Joe. At my form <laughs> at my former institution, we needed gaff tape, so I was going to order it on Amazon, and I just typed gaff right and. Uh, and then, and that's what came up, but that worst, but then one of my student workers, you know, sh shout out uh, there to uh, Melissa, walks in right when that's on the screen with no context, not any idea what, what it's about. And uh, I'm trying to be like, I'm looking for tape, like floor tape. And they she didn't believe me. Oh. So yeah, it learned something tonight. Thank you. <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a yeah. So it's I got this like fish hook thing, and then I have that item that you're talking about, Joe, and then Jim Gaffigan. So that that just I guess that shows my uh, my uh, what we call it algorithm at work there. What I, love I am about a fan of Jim Gaffigan. That I have an I have an ad for gaff tape above mine, so that's great. Yeah. My <laughs> my Amazon was automatically set to books. <laughs> unsurprisingly and it came up with gaff goddess tips for how to run your life and home i'm like hey interesting that sounds like a good book <laughs> uh all right well on that note <laughs> uh we're, we're gonna switch gears um we're we're going to uh put the we're gonna kind of take a small hiatus for the for the uh the firing range this this week uh, but we are going to do, I know it's a sad pew pew right now. I'm sorry, Kim. Uh, but we are doing the great AV debate. Um, we are going to still split into two teams. Uh, we're going to have a little more structure on it this time and more so than our presidential debate did last night. Just putting that out there. Uh, similar format. Uh, I will give, I, I will give two minutes and about two minutes of argument, uh, for each side, uh, and then we will open up to uh, general banter, uh, you know, and please be uh, courteous to the person speaking. Um, you know, maybe, maybe if we do this I right. Was that? I want to interrupt. Well, you, <laughs> well, yeah, you did that already. So oh, yeah, you. that's what I want to do because you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong about the rules. No, no <laughs> they're my rules. It's not how you do it. It's the firing range, and you don't mess with the firing range. This is great. See, actually, I like that rule. Oh, see, yeah, you're already debating the firing range hey. being not the yeah. firing range. <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna make well, because, uh, yeah, we'll do. I'm gonna do Joe, and I'm gonna do Kim as uh, team captains. Um, and you're two, the, so you're going to have, because of the way that we are developing as this new construct of how we do business, how we, uh, develop things. Um, we have, we have the old huddle room that we're all so fond of small room, a couple chairs, monitor on the wall. Uh, and then we're going to be versus the 
virtual breakout room, as it were. So where do the favor of the physical space or the favor of the digital space and why? So I will be the moderator. I will be keeping time. So that's why I didn't put myself as team captain. Uh, so we're going to be four verse three. Um, and Joe and Kim took a drink at the same time getting ready for this. So <laughs> um, I'm going to give uh, ladies choice to Kim to, do you want to pick your team or do you want your topic? Can I, can I have a, a question? Sure. Like how far in the future is this world we're talking about? Are we talking about like six months from now or six years from now? Well, with people leaning more towards staying as a work from home, as a more permanent option going through the year 2021, uh, that, that seems like based on polls that I've seen on Twitter, uh, we're going to say near future of the next year. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll pick my topic. Okay. And I'm going to go with the virtual work environment, vir the virtual meeting. Virtual breakout room. Okay. Oh, All right. man. All right, Joe. All right, no way, no way. That one. <laughs> well, hey, you're, you're the director of classroom environments. So I, <laughs> I would hope the physical space uh, works out for you. So you get to pick your team, uh, Joe. So it uh, it's four versus three, though? Uh, yeah, so... All right, well, here's the thing. It's very simple. I'm taking Lexi and Jimmy against everybody else. Okay. Hey, so, Lexi versus the world. Uh, All right. Woo -woo. Here we go. Physical I'm going to trust two that the... Who you want to work them out. Uh-huh. I, I am going <laughs> to trust that the two... That, that my two youth will beat the veterans. All right. There we go. All right, so here, I'm going to... I'm going to... <laughs> so we're gonna I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a flip. Uh, I don't have a coin actually, which is odd. I don't have really, and it changed. Like Joe and I just What's or, that? Is this like a one on one and then a group conversation or? Yes, yeah, so, or you could choose somebody else to lead off for for if you don't want to lead right, off it's yourselves. Right, a debate, not a firing range. Does someone on my team feel very strongly about the virtual work environment? I will give you a minute to kind of figure this out. Not your team, but I do. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have, to, you have to be the side of traditional. Oh, what? I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Joe picked you for physical <laughs> space. <laughs> like, it's Dang what it. we, what we're going to lose. For, we're going to lose right we now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling well, lose for me. It literally is your job, but I'd, it's okay. Oh. I'd be happy to like, lead, to lead the uh, virtual. And I would like you to do it just because your accent is so but, much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, can listen to you all day. Dan. It only it only gets you so far, Kim. That, that's, what I, that's what I have realized. But all we need is a win. Far enough. <laughs> so I don't. So I uh, and then Joe, are you leading off for your group or Jimmy, Lex? Do you want it? Do you who, who you want it or I want you to lead it so we can we can uh, take some of your. Uh, juice and keep running okay. with it i'll just I'll, I'll 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 chum the waters and then you can go and attack we'll, we'll right. interrupt <laughs> all right all right well the first two minutes are uninterrupted so or ish two minutes ish so the the opening arguments are uninterrupted and then we can work into some banter back and forth so um I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a coin flip, but I don't have a coin with me, so we're gonna do a bottle cap flip because that's okay. what I have right in front so of me. Far. So we're gonna so okay. we're gonna so uh, Kim, I'm gonna give you uh, heads or tails, and it's heads for Sam Adams logo, tails for the bottom of the cap. All right. So. Well, I'm gonna have to go uh, tails. Did that hurt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ended like it. It was probably a bad idea, but I'm okay. That's going to leave a mark. Is a hole in his hand now. So, all right. So it was it was the Sam Adams uh, head. So it is uh, to Joe to start off. So, all right. So we are talking about why the traditional huddle space is better than the virtual breakout room. Well, there's two ways to go about it. First off we have to think about our connection, right? COVID has sucked for everybody. And while we are going virtual and while there is this move to work from home and have our careers go that direction, really what we miss is connection. 
that personal touch, the hug with the person in the office you haven't seen. And now maybe we can't do that with you know, the masks and stuff, but there will be a point where we go beyond that. There's going to be a point where we need to have coffee together, where we need to have community. Because you know what happens when you don't have community? That's when like grandma dies, okay? We're going to go back to killing grandma here, all right? <laughs> because wow. <laughs> when you live in a virtual world, what you end up doing too. is isolating those who need connection the most, Right? And what we need to be able to do is get human interaction back. Now, how many people have been in a, in a normal huddle room and then you put the far end persons on the screen and then you forget they're there because you talk to the people in the room, right? Being virtual is not good for building a team environment. It's about being with those who you need to continue to build connection with. That's it. All right. Good job. And that was it. roughly two minutes. Thank you very much for sticking with time, Joe. All right. Uh, Dan, uh, your, uh, your counter argument for uh, the virtual space. All right. Thank you, Tim. So I, I, think, uh, I think that kind of intimacy that, that Joe was talking about is, uh, is overrated. I think, um, I think the problem with uh, those sorts of huddle environments is we actually become over familiar um and um we, we because we're not because we're not we're focusing too much on making deeper connections with people we're 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 closed off to new ideas and what what could be a better a better way to open yourself up to new ideas uh, than to develop a, a, a virtual breakout room to which anyone in the world can be invited from, from wherever they are, um, from whatever time zone they're in, um, whatever, their, whatever their perspective, um, whatever their experience, whatever language they speak, um, whatever they're wearing, whatever their culture and their tradition. Um, and bringing that that diversity of perspective together is something that a, a physical space just can't do um and i think one of the things that we've learned in this in, during this pandemic is just how much stronger we are and just how much more innovative our organizations can become when we open ourselves up to new ideas um from all over the world and in my mind, there's, there's, there's no going back. I think, I think I, I love having a coffee with friends. I love, I love that, um, that physical connection. Um, but I, I, I want, I want to continue to be open to new ideas and I want them to be, um, from as many people and from as many perspectives and from as many countries in the world as possible. That's that's great. All right. Uh, going back over to the, uh, the huddle room uh, team, uh, Lex or Jimmy. I'll take this one. I got this. Um, so I'm going to lead with the customer experience side of it um, because nothing, nothing will ever replace talking to a person. Um, and there's no amount of virtual that can get you as close as creating that deep connection, Dan, even though, you know, the deep connection is not needed according to the virtual team. Um, the deep connection is needed in order to keep a strong customer relationship. And I think that'll never go away. Also, water cooler talk doesn't exist in a virtual meeting room and you'll never get that again and if you stay virtual all the time that's great but you you constantly multitask you're never going to be focused on one uh project again because you always have your email open no one attends a zoom meeting and just sits on a zoom meeting not possible so that's my main argument i don't think i need a full two minutes i think i summed it up all right back to the back to the virtual team that was beautiful, Jimmy. I was ready. I'll go next. After. We'll have to go back uh, uh, to virtual. Murphy, Renee, would either of you care to join in? Oh, oh. I Wait, like but then they were going to get two in a row. Oh, yeah. All right. I think Murphy should close. She looks <laughs> like she's ready to go. Is it go now? No, I think you should go last. Okay. okay. Go last. Renee, okay. would you like to go? Yeah, sure. So, 
Okay, what did we have in our huddle rooms? We had the audio pieces, the video pieces, we had people. So we have gone through this pandemic and we have figured it out. We all now have cameras and look at the pretty microphone you have. Is that in your daughter's room still, Joe? I mean, we all have figured it out, right? <laughs> you can't talk because you can't interrupt. Oh <laughs> but um, we still are gonna have, and we're talking about within the year, we're not talking about forever. So within the year, we are still gonna have schools that are gonna have kids at home. Um, we're still gonna have grandmas that are living with us. We can't afford to go to a whole room and get sick from somebody on our way there and bring it back to grandma and the kids that are still at home. Um, nobody misses hugs and all of that more than me, but I'll hug you like in 2022, um, like St. Patty's Day. We're all waiting for the St. Patty's Day party, right? It's mm -hmm. gonna come just not probably in the next year. So as far as forgetting people are in the room, I don't know how you do that. Have you seen the videos of the people walking around in their underwear? How do you forget that those people are in the room? I think we've got it figured out and suck it up. It's gonna have to just happen the next six, nine, 12 months. That's it. All right, likes. Oh, I got nervous. <laughs> okay, so I've done both. Okay, I've done in-person work and I'm not the type of person who's all about that deep connection when it comes to my coworkers. It's, um, it's let's get things done. And then if we happen to become friends, that's cool. If not, I'm not really bothered. We're just coworkers. So I don't really care about that deeper connection. So I was stoked to work at home. When I tell you stoked, I mean beyond stoked. And then I went home. And then suddenly I had to work 10 times harder to even have a minimal co-working relationship with anyone in the office to be able to talk about what they're doing, what's going on, what's affecting their deadlines, how projects are going. And it just, it required way more effort than just seeing somebody mean like, yo, how's this going? You know what I mean? Like now that I'm here in the office, it's 10 times easier just to bring something up instead of having to call and set up a meeting. I could just turn to Jimmy and say, hey, Jimmy, what's this, this, this that, and that, you know, instead of messaging and then waiting on that. So that's my big thing is it requires a lot more effort from home. And then um, the last thing is the collaborative work. I just, I have a design team under me and it's not the same as being in front of a board, drawing, being together, feeling that energy. Um, there's no lag, nobody's internet is weird, nobody's distracted because we're all there. Nothing replaces that. Thank you. Come Creativity in. for the win. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, I would still have uh, Kim and Murphy to, to, to tag team for their final answer. Okay, so maybe we should each just do one minute so that we, <laughs> we can be fair. Um, so I'm going to approach this as the person who has to pay the bills and signs the checks at the company. Uh, I have a Manhattan apartment, a uh, Manhattan office in Times Square. And the cost per square foot for my employees to be there is like $11 billion a square foot. <laughs> um, my cost for Zoom is like 30 bucks a month. Um, so like I'm kind of okay with us not all being in the same room. There's also the factor of the commute, right? So my staff was paying hundreds of dollars for bus tickets and subway tickets and train tickets. Now they don't have to pay that. They suddenly just got an increase in their salaries they didn't expect to get. And they're so used to getting up at 5.30 in the morning that they get up anyway. And instead of sitting on the bus or the subway or the train, they just go and they wander into their offices and start working. Also, as a leader who wants to get the most productivity out of my staff there's no going home they're already <laughs> if i want something done at 8 p.m i just bother them in their office which is their home so all hours have gone away it's like a manager's dream hmm. sorry <laughs> that's awesome wow. Kim. And, and then yeah. my staff think i bother them at all hours wow yeah yeah, I was yeah, about to say, uh, not just virtual. <laughs> sacrifice all mental health, you know, and just, just go straight for it. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right, Murphy. Close this out, Murph. <laughs> Having a virtual connection has so many advantages. 
It is true. I will grant you being inside the room with a person to see the sweat dripping down the side of their head or see the sparkle in their very, very subtle smile. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the difference between live music and an MP3. However, because we have MP3s, we can listen to a lot more music and it travels around. So the ability to include people from all over the world, wherever they need to be, whenever they need to be, because sometimes you Definitely when this COVID thing happened, I would be helping my daughter during her school day and shifting to working from uh, starting at bedtime 8 to 11. That would happen for me in order to manage my workload at that time. So the inclusivity of people being able to work when they need to virtually is super useful and mobility. Everybody can work for wherever they are, not just Manhattan or I don't know, New Jersey, wherever you guys do over there on the East Coast. Hmm but wherever in the world. So that when you're talking to them at 8 p.m. when, you're wor when I'm working after my um, daughter is asleep, I can know that's the start of their work day. Thank you, you go take it for eight hours and take it somewhere and they can move it that way. So the mobility is really amazing. Also, when you have a meeting, yeah, I'm not seeing the sweat drip down your face or your uncomfortableness when I suggest something that might be hard for you, but we are able to share our screens and get work done. I'm working on something and I'm working on it and somebody else says, wait, let me pull this up and you can all work on it, all your pieces together shared and you can decide it right then in that hour. So if everybody is doing their work and we trust them to do their work, when we meet, that virtual meeting with everybody on their device is incredibly powerful. So boom, I believe in virtual. <laughs> wait, can I pull a Trump real quick? Um, just so you know, Zoom doesn't stop working when you're in the office. You can still share screens with each other and Zoom in the office. We do that. This is true. Also. This is true. And we can invite anyone Zoom from it. around the world as well, Dan. We can right. invite people into our offices as well. I have Zoomed my boss from his <laughs> office that's next to mine. When you do that, like you've already said, when you have people up on the screen, they get ignored. If it, if you're in a if you're in a physical huddle space, the people then they're disconnected from the physical meeting. Oh, also, I did leave out one argument, so I'm going to take time back because it was a four versus three. Um, and this really goes to Renee and Kim. You know the you know those who who look at sales dollars. The the physical conference room is where I sign the PO. Oh. Oh. That's oh. true. We don't sign POs unless lunch is bought beforehand. That's that is right. a fact. Uh, do you and... know how many lunches I have bought during COVID? <laughs> I just send out our gift office. cards. There you go. <laughs> You're not in my territory, but I'm not physically there, but they're still getting lunch on me <laughs> in their homes with DoorDash. Gotta, gotta, as I say, I'm in the wrong territory then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to reach out to my rep. You got to reach out to my rep here, Renee. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> right. I, I've had full-time jobs that have been 100% remote and then full-time jobs that have been 100% virtual. I mean, 100% in the office. And there's just such a happy medium to that stuff. Um, like there are things I cannot do virtually. I am dying to be in a room with a whiteboard with my team and to lock ourselves in with some Chinese food and dry erase markers and figure stuff out. And you cannot do that. Yeah, virtually. That is that is just not a thing you can do virtually. There, there's like a lot of pieces missing. We used to have like this Thursday afternoon, let's break for an hour and we'll go play video games for an hour and just laugh and have fun. And you would think that would be something that translates to virtual, but we just haven't been able to sustain it. Mm -hmm. uh, no one shows up or people have conflicts. And quite frankly, the environment we're all working in, I think someone referenced like killing grandma. But like, there's also a you have to be cognizant of what other people's lives are like in their homes right now. Like who's got two kids who aren't going to school because the school's not open, who, you know, you're trying to, like I have a six-year-old son, try to have a six-year-old son operate a computer in all of this virtual environment by himself. Like there's just have to be this level of understanding that we are all in this giant wormhole of chaos right now. And as managers, as leaders, as bosses, we have to just go, we're, we're taking a break. Somebody I was on something with called this like the great reset. Has anyone heard of that expression? She kept referring to COVID as the great reset. 
Like that this was like this pause button in the chaos of our lives where we were hitting reset and just starting over and figuring out what actually works versus like what we got. And restart on your, yeah. Yeah, like we've just reset. We said, stop what you're doing. Everybody go home. We're resetting and we're going to figure out what actually works best for all of us. And it sounded so hokey when she said it. I was like, wow, that's a really nice euphemism for the apocalypse. But in reality, <laughs> she's not totally wrong. We have this opportunity as leaders to bring it around, as leaders to go like, what actually works? What do we need? Do I need a 3,500 square foot office in Times Square? Do I need that? What, what do I really need? How many days do I need to get together? I think the Chinese restaurants that you're talking about with the Chinese food bringing into the conference room, they need to add whiteboards to their dining rooms. Well, and I will tell you what, there is a Dunkin' Donuts by my office, I mean, by my house, in, down the street, mm. yeah, it's in Morris Plains, on Route 10. The one, by, uh, the, the one by the Chick-fil-A and all that, yes. that, that shop, that Dunkin', okay. That one. They have a conference room in the Dunkin' Donuts that you what? can rent for $10 an hour. It has 12, 12 seats, a conference table, and a screen. And I think they figure, well, if you're there, you're going to buy some Dunkin' Donuts because you're in Dunkin' Donuts. This is... That's your new office, your new huddle. You yeah. And by the way, you just, made, you just made an yeah. argument. By the way, you just made the argument for the in-person huddle space. Yeah, we haven't even yeah. finished yeah. this debate you, yet. You, so. I, thought, I, thought the, I thought the debate was over and we were saying... what we we <laughs> Yeah, that's, I kind of was... I, I, didn't yeah. Give yeah. My I didn't get a chance to give my verdict. Oh, yeah. on, uh, Tim, but, please okay, tell everyone how we want. What does everyone... What does everyone think about like the we work spaces, like the happy yes. middle? That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like That's rental spaces. Yeah. Like, though is being completely because you're out of you're going into an office. You're you know, but I think that's a, another happy middle option, especially but, if you have a lot of people at home running around. Right, because who needs to spend eleven billion dollars <laughs> on on a room on a office in uh, yeah. Times Square, you know, so. Yeah. Although it was overlooking Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville or something like that. Saddest thing about the COVID apocalypse, they were so close to finishing the Margaritaville opposite my office. No. I think there's You could have had going. all your meetings there. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten nothing done. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So I, yeah, well, Unfortunately, my, my opinion already swayed towards the physical space. So I, 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 although Dan did bring up a very strong argument for the, the virtual environment of bringing in global uh, thoughts and bringing in those outside voices. And yes, I, yes, we can bring that into a, into a huddle room as well. Um, so I, th I think there's a place for both of them. And I, I think that's just also my, my higher ed uh, mindset that, thinks about that because there is always going to be a spot for a classroom you know there, there's you know breakout rooms within zoom and you know all those other providers like those are great they're great for getting us by for what we need to do now but as far as continuing for all eternity <laughs> which this hopefully we will not be doing uh you know there it's not it's not sustainable for teaching I think with the uh, ongoing use of it, as as we stop being forced into this choice, everyone is forced into this choice, and now we've really tried it. We know what this is now. Not We didn't know what that was before. A lot of people hadn't done the virtual thing. Now they have. Everybody has. So now they're saying, okay, now we can decide what is the best use for both of these and utilize them appropriately and probably stretch them even further to um, pull them into the best that they can be. I wonder if it'd be cheaper for employers to have virtual workers and then like once a week or once a quarter pay for them like accommodations if they need to come in to have like um, in person for three days or something like that. Hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I would be curious about that too. I've heard some companies do that as well um, for the in person like big bonding mm. type activities and conferences and stuff and then otherwise everyone's at home. Um, might be cheaper than 11 billion, what is it, dollars? 11 billion dollars. 11 billion. 11 billion. Okay. Um, cool. I would love to pitch a new business model for somebody who wants to run with something new. Instead of WeWork, where you share an office space 
and everybody gets a portion of the space, have a WeWork where you share the office time. Like I only want the office one day a week. Mm. And then there's kind of a similar model called Breather in New York. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this app. We've used it for like offsites and things where you can just rent a workspace for a few hours or for a day. Mm. And I think that is going to be like the new thing. Like, okay, I need to get my whole team together, but we need to be so far apart. So even mm-hmm. though I have 12 people on my team, I need a space big enough for 40. Where is that? And then just rent that space for a few hours. Right. Well, and that's I think that's actually the ideal situation, especially considering what currently we have to go through to prepare spaces for like especially with classrooms. Like if we have professors going back to back, like having somebody come in, clean everything. If you just had the space for one day that a cleaning crew came in, disinfected the entire place, it's ready to go for Tuesday morning for the next person. I think that's an ad- ideal situation. I think that's, that's great. Especially, especially if there was a Dunkin' Donuts next door. Well, that too. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. I think, so I that's think great. Like a I real think answer is, is a combo of both. Yeah. I think it that's is. also, yeah. it is. The real yeah, because there's like the productivity is. model, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we're so productive when we're at home. And it's like, okay, yeah, productivity. I'm not, I'm not doubting that. I know productivity is lower in the office, but you have so much more fun in the office and your happiness at work is going to determine much more about your work than mm-hmm. anything else. You know, if you hate what you're doing, you're not going to be productive at home either. Um, but if you enjoy those times and you look forward to those times, then the times you are at home will make up for it and you will have those productive moments. Unless you hate your coworkers. Then- From the um, out of home advertising industry, if everybody could get back on the roads and go to their offices, that would be great. Hey, I've been doing. I've been doing that. I haven't stopped doing that. So my online shopping has gone up though a lot since being home. My grocery shopping has been out of hand. Yeah, although I have You're leveraged not spending more. Spending a hundred bucks a meal at Margaritaville. No, no. Well, there is that. Um, that's company money, though. <laughs> that's that's not that, home that's money. Right off, that's right off there. So. Well, but yeah. yeah, like we were fueling the economy with lunches and things while we were at the office like let's all let's that's what a lot of yeah it's what a lot of the restaurant businesses are especially like in mars plains a lot of them are struggling because all those businesses aren't there right now so now speaking of coming up with new business ideas i think there should be consultants that help actually keep virtual um meetings with everybody included because that is an art Hmm. people will sit back and they need to be brought in and you know that could definitely be a, a virtual moderator. I was just at virtual moderators. That sounds like a. Mm, thank so you. So if you're looking to uh, I'll outsource, send you check every now and then. Yeah. Commission. Hmm. It's like I could host your meeting for you. <laughs> could we consult out the AV life? For, they, open, uh... <laughs> they open up a bad, bad joke to start. <laughs> you know. Always looking for the next sponsor, aren't we? Well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> You sponsor our podcast, we come out and host your meeting. <laughs> yeah. Host your meetings. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna sign off here uh, tonight. I want to uh, I want to thank our uh, our guests tonight. Uh, Dan, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Your your uh, your wisdom was uh, very much felt uh, today. So thank you for uh, for bringing your uh, your mindset on everything. Thank you, uh, Lex. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Hope you had fun uh, with us uh, tonight. It was actually really fun. Really <laughs> liked the debate. That was fun. Fun. Yeah, it was a, yeah, a nice little uh, change of uh, pace, and uh, so there may be more of that coming up down the pipe. So keep an eye out for those of you, or hear you're out, depending on what uh, mode you're uh, catching us. Uh, Jimmy, <laughs> thank you for uh, coming back out again. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I can be found on all of the socials. Um, you know, look me up. Um, I'm available. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me again. This is really fun. I really love this. Yeah, Lex, uh, where could uh, do you want people to find you out there on the, the socials? Yeah, I'm at It's Joe's Joe, or uh, <laughs> or at Nice the Hetma Award Hall. winning the Hetma, Hetma Award winning account at It's Joe's Joe run with myself and Jimmy. Um, Mm -hmm. it's, it's always a good time over there. I use that way more than my personal account. And then my, all my personal socials are under nice one, Lex. All right. 
and uh, Dan, maybe we'll see you in the, in the Twitterverse, uh, or or maybe not. You know, so. I, I need to uh, you know I need to consult with all the people that I'm mentoring and leading. You know, so it might take <laughs> Under, a while. Uh, understood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'll let you know for sure. We will be waiting with anticipation. So, <laughs> uh, Eridai, thank you very much as always, and to how are uh, bleh, for all your insight tonight. Wow, I'm really I I made it so far. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> yeah, although it's early for for us right now. We're we're doing yeah. good on time. So yeah, we are. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks thanks for everybody for being here. This was a very interesting evening, and I love the debate. Uh, you can find me on all the social media platforms at NAC Display Renee. Right. And uh, Kim, thank you as always to, for being here. It's always a pleasure and an honor to play with my AV friends. You can find me on the Tweet Storm 2020 that somebody just woke up on Twitter. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, we added, we, yeah, we added, uh, we added a new uh, face onto the list. So we it did. just never dies. <laughs> Ever. Thanks for having me, Tim. Really nice job tonight. Thank you very much, Murphy. Thank you very much for uh, your PM minute and uh, for joining us tonight. Glad to be here. I'm glad to have you on board as a, now now your fr official full crew member uh, episode. So, yep. congratulations, <laughs> and uh, and Joe Way, thank you, hey, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And of course, I'm going to send people to Higher Ed AV uh, because you were the guest on this week's podcast. Yes, I was. So go and check that out. Yeah, one of the few second time uh, guests. So. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I was very happy Welcome that you the had club. Though Jimmy yeah. is happy to have the honor as the most appearances of anybody. Most appearances. I'm an important person, you know. Am, is or my just, episode still the most popular, though? You're, I haven't checked popularity. Um, but yeah, I'll say yes, of course. of course. I'm going for quantity more than quality. <laughs> really just kind of... <laughs> Is many that, possible. Isn't that what Alec Baldwin did with SNL? So, you know, it's just, it was about quality. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so keep it, keep an ear out. We do have some, uh, some big news coming in uh, 11 days, Joe. Yeah. On October 13th, make sure you go to higheredav.com for the release of the hundredth episode and a lot of big changes. Yeah, a lot of it's going to be some huge news coming out. Uh, again, I'm your host, uh, Tim Van Wert. Uh, you can now also find uh, the new AV Life uh, Twitter account uh, at the AV Life Pod. Uh, so if you haven't uh, followed us there, or if you haven't, uh, if I haven't found you, uh, please follow back. Uh, I'm I'm slowly working through the uh, the list of followers from the old Twitter account. Uh, Twitter is trying to I'm trying to play nice with Twitter. So um, as long as it plays nice back, then we're okay. So uh, key, uh, key, and keep an ear out uh, and uh, keep an eye out for all episodes. And until our next adventure. <laughs>